Uh, hear me all right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right, great. I don't know what that noise is. Hopefully that's not us. Somebody's um, got their door open. They must be at their car, and I think they've got their door open. Yeah, they're, they're stopped. Okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. Um, we've already done a roll call. So, I tell you what, just to keep things in order, uh, Stephanie, would you mind please doing another one, an official one? Mr. Riddle? Here. Mr. Love? Here. Uh, Mr. Isbell? Here. And Mr. Harris? Here. Here. And Ms. Alice at the quad. All right, so I've got a little microphone set up here. We were having trouble um, <clears throat> being heard over Zoom last time, so hopefully, hopefully this will help a little bit. We'll just pass the mic around as people need to speak. Um, first order of business, um, does anyone have any announcements? Any of the board members have any announcements or anything you want to say before we get into the issues? I don't okay. Know. All right, there being none, um, I would um, I would welcome a motion to approve the minutes as they were sent to you um, a couple of weeks ago. I believe everyone should have gotten a copy of the minutes. Stephanie went through and finished them up. So and, moved. Uh, so moved. I'm sticking that motion. I'm uh, sorry. Repeat that. Who uh, was that? Was that you, Judge? Yes. Okay. Um, the motion. Uh, motion from James and um, do I have a second? From Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, okay, a second from Jeremy. All right. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, any opposed? All right. Uh, the minutes are approved. All right, we'll just uh, move on into the items. Number one on the agenda is 260 Oxmoor Road, uh, owned by the Patels. Uh, this this item has been carried over several times. Uh, yeah. Look, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mr. Pugh? Yes. Uh, might I make a motion to move this uh, item to the last item on the night? Okay, um, do I have a second? I second that motion. Uh. Um, the, the Patels have indicated they need to drive back to Atlanta and they're not gonna be able to stay. Is there any wiggle room in that? Uh, maybe. Yeah. That's fine, let's, I mean, I, let's go ahead and get it out of the way again. All right. Um, I withdraw the uh, motion. Okay, motion withdrawn. Um, <clears throat> okay, so back to 260 Oxmoor Road. Uh, it's been carried over a few times. Um, we've been waiting on um, some details to come forward. So no further ado, I'll just turn it over to Mr. Patel um, and just uh, let you go ahead and describe what it is that you've, uh, what you'd like to bring forward tonight. Okay. Sure, no problem. No problem at all. Uh, first off, we uh, before we move forward and explain what we're planning to redevelop our site with and whatnot, I just want to take a moment to mention a few things on the record that this is the first commercial building ever to be put on the Homewood Housing and Pavement Board. We are made aware of that the person who has this is the first commercial building to ever be put on the Homewood Housing Abatement Board. We were also made aware that um, a council member by the name of Mr. Wolverton is the one that's been pushing for our property to be put on the abandoned board. We just want to make sure everybody's aware that we've never been reached out by him. Never, he never took the initiative to reach out to us to, you know, discuss our property with us, any concerns that he may have, or any concerns that anyone that's said anything to him about it. 
And in fact, the last two meetings that we've attended, he's never showed up to those meetings. You would think that, yeah, if you think that if he was going to put us on the abatement board, he would have showed up to the meetings from the previous meetings. Not sure if he's on Zoom right now. I hope he is. Um, uh, the other thing we want to point out the fact is that we've been told by people who live and work in the city of Homewood that this being the first commercial building they ever put on the abatement, the Homewood Housing Abatement Board, it comes off very, uh, for the lack of a better term, harassment, uh, targeting. And if you were in our shoes, we look at it as a very discriminatory thing, considering we're the only Indian owned building, commercial building, mind you, on the Housing Abatement Board. The other buildings in Homewood on West Valley Avenue and all over the city of Homewood that are vacant, that are also, you know, commercial buildings that have severe violations are not on the abatement board. And you would think that if he took the initiative to, you know, want to make a change in West Homewood, which we appreciate that, we, we want to see change as well. You know, you would think that he would have gone and actually looked for those other buildings as well. That being said, um, you know, we just think that he should do his job a little bit more ethically and fairly. Um, but anyways, regardless of the fact, moving forward, we intend to redevelop our site. Our plans entail to get the property rezoned and then to demo the entire building. We've been wanting to do this for the past year and a half, almost two years. And uh, obviously we've met with several people in the city. We're appreciative for their time and their input in this process. And we're looking heavily, very forward to moving forward with this redevelopment plan. We're very excited. Um, we feel like it's going to re, you know, re enhance the entire image of the area, which obviously I think we can all agree it definitely needs it. Um, so the first part, we've already uh, submitted an application in. Um, we've got rendering, site plans, and everything. Uh, we submitted that in today. So we're looking forward to uh, working with the Planning Commission on this and moving forward with our development. Um, development does entail for the property to be rezoned. And then the phase one uh, part of it, I mean, obviously we have to demo the entire building. The phase one would be to develop a uh, class A secured, limited access, modern storage facility. It's not your traditional storage facility that you see, you know, one story with the doors, like garage doors outside. It's nothing like that. It's completely, uh, you know, modern. It's all interior corridor. And then the phase two will be a, to develop the retail and restaurant portion right in front of the property of the, uh, of the uh, source development. Um, so those are our plans. We've already submitted the, uh, the application for this. Um, anybody have any questions or anything? I have a question, Mr. Riddle. Uh, Mr. Mr. Pugh, did have you did you receive the documents he's uh, speaking of today? Yes, um, the Patels submitted an um, application to the Planning Commission for a rezone of okay. the property, and uh, they also submitted a a site plan with a, a proposed um, uh, with a proposed uh, development. Okay. So, uh, what what's the time frame, Mr. Patel? That uh, you're on our? Will you be on our next? Uh, uh, probably not in November, but uh, December uh, planning commission meeting. Yes. Okay. Okay, so I make a move. I make a motion to uh, to carry this over until after the planning commission overlooks the documents and uh, makes a a decision on what uh, what they're going to do. Uh, mm. Does anyone else have any comments? Do you have a timeline? Like you're back. Well, I know that it's contingent on the Yeah, I know it's contingent on that, but do you have personally a timeline for that? Like you would like to see happen? Oh, we'd love to have tomorrow. We've been ready for this since last year. Yeah. We've been ready for this. We've been silent. Obviously, we, we had to keep it under wraps, uh, not to keep it a secret from everybody. We yeah. work to like make sure everything's finalized. Obviously, you know, COVID 19 completely changed everybody's. Uh, it's dynamic commercial real estate right now. We're just, we're just like we're still willing to move forward with this plan, okay. um, but of course it's contingent on a rezoning. And of course, after that, uh, we're full steam ahead to demo the building. That's our goal. Okay. <clears throat> and again, I don't mean to backtrack 
Uh, I do want to mention a couple of things. Um, you know, again, we want to make sure that there is change in the neighborhood, things that when people take the exit that they actually see uh, positivity. Uh, nobody wants to see the hotel, we get it. But ultimately, we want to do something positive for the area. And somehow we're still here talking about something that we're in the development zone. We're dealing with a worldwide pandemic, a nationwide uh, moratorium on foreclosure. And yet here we are, continue talking about our hotel as an issue when it was driven by a war that we've been told by people who live and work in the city of Homewood that this has been nothing but a political game for Mr. Warburton. Now, yes, he got voted in. So again, yes. he, and I'll, I'll speak to that in a second, sir. I'm not finished speaking, sorry. Um, I'd like to say though, um, you know, you would think somebody who's running would, would emphasize the fact that you want to be fair and ethical and honest. If you really care about War II, West Homewood, you wouldn't just continually coming after our building. You would go after the other buildings, especially commercial. If you're going to put us on a housing abatement board and you put us on a commercial building when there's several other com commercial buildings with broken windows, uh, mold, all types of issues. Crates, yeah. metal. Crates, metal, oh, you name it. Go on, back, go on back, be drive, go on West Valley. You'll see it all day, every day. Now, if you really took the initiative, now I don't know if you just drive down West Oxford when you go home and you call it a done day, but in your campaign, you had said that you wanted to see change in West Homewood. Now, surely you drove around West Homewood. Surely you took some notes. But surely you went to the new uh, police station up the road on Bagby Drive and you noticed that well, there's a three, there's a commercial buildings up this street that will have that are in absolute poor condition that have been closed prior to our hotel being closed. And I do want to mention one thing. Uh, we've been told about people who also live and work in the city that we are wrongfully shut down. And this is in quotes, wrongfully shut down, and that we were not the problem. And wrong that place at the wrong time. we were at the wrong place at the wrong time. Again, we've been silent for six years. Uh, we don't appreciate this constant harassment. Again, those are not our words. By people who live and work in the city of Homewood, that this is nothing but harassment, and this is targeting and discriminate discrimination, and it's it needs to stop because if you really care, you would not just pick our hotel as your building block for your political campaign. You would do something about everything else because you know that is a tough task, but it's so easy to pick on us always. It's so easy to pick on us, but why don't you? be a professional and come up to us and talk to us and say, hey, what can I do? If you really care, you don't go, and you never even show up to any of these meetings. Why is it that you decide to, let me just hide behind the wall and let me just say and complain about these Patels and this and that and the other, just so you can see your, your political game. Again, that word political game was not from us. Those are from people that live in the war and work in the city of home. And mm. we will just leave it at that. Again, we want to do something moving forward. We want to do something positive for this area. And we're willing to do it like now. We're, we're willing to spend the money to do it. However, it's contingent upon the rezoning. The other option would be the zoning, the rezoning doesn't take place. We have the option to fix the building. It is a really, really, really small amount compared to the money that we would spend to develop the site than to just fix the problem. Now, fixing the problem doesn't really do anybody any good. It really just keeps it there for, let's just say, another six years. It just keeps it there for another six years and nothing else is done. Now, we have the option to do it. It's a full concrete structure building. It is not made out of any drywall, wood, uh, not like any mid-rises that get built today. There's a lot of, that, the type of construction that takes place on that type of hotel doesn't exist anymore. Nobody spends that kind of money on mid-rise properties anymore. They only do it for high-rise properties. Again, we want to see change. We want to, we've spent a lot of time, a lot of meetings. We wanted to do other, there were other things in plan before COVID hit. Obviously with COVID, there's a lot of people losing their shirts. I mean, we've got Brookwood Village, prominent restaurant, uh, you know, being gone from there. There's a lot.
Wyatt, we've lost uh, you or you're frozen, Wyatt. Yeah, I can't hear anything either. <clears throat> Does anybody have a way to message Wyatt? I'm not, um, maybe he doesn't know that they've been, that they've lost their signal. Let me call him. It looks like he's coming back in. If you look at the building in the West Valley, you can drive. Go, just go in and look at it. All right, Wyatt, we've got you back now. We can see you and hear All you. All right. I don't know what happened. Uh, let's see if I can get back to a view where I can see everyone. You're going? If you want me to stop sharing the screen, I can do that, and that may help you. Let me let me do that. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't think that's the problem. I'm. I just I wanted to get to where I could see everyone, but because uh, we can't see. See if that oh, helps. Wait. Hey, yeah. There we go. Oh yeah, that's yeah, great. That's okay. Yeah, I figured you're not for some reason you're not able to change it, so I just stopped the share. Um, okay. Uh, people can just go by the agenda online for right now. I can pop it up every now and then. Okay, that that's ideal. All right, thank you. Um, let's see here. Now let me lost him again. I, I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry. No worries. I can go. Go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Malfunction. But um, ultimately, we want, like I said, we were looking forward, um, you know, to do something positive on our site, redevelop it. Um, you know, we want everybody to take that exit with, with joy and make sure that they are seeing something positive. And we understand it's, you know, but again, ultimately we are here because we have been pushed by a certain council member and uh, yet he's never showed up to any of the previous meetings. It's so easy for you know, him to keep targeting us as for his political gain. Again, I want to mention those are not our words. Those are words from people who live and work in the city of home with that know him very well. And uh, they said that he's been doing this for his own political gain. And I want to make that very clear. And uh, again, the options are the rezoning. We've spent a lot of time, money, effort. These guys have been on it as well, retail specialist guys. And we want to do something positive. Again, everything's contingent on the rezoning. Otherwise, 
we'll have to spend a complete small, small fraction of that amount into fixing the building, which that does not do anybody any good. The structure. It is a concrete structure. It doesn't, it's not just going to crumble. In fact, it would probably be the last building standing next to any other concrete building that would be there during a hurricane. I'm just giving you guys an example. It is, there's no one going in the building. So if it's just an eyesore thing, well, we got a solution for it. And if it's a safety thing, well, it's not going to crumble because it's a concrete structure. Again, we can internal demo the building, we will fix the building, and then it just stays there until the day that it sells. And we don't want that route. We want to go with something positive. We're willing, even though, you know, we've been shut down for six years and we're still wanting to do something positive. Uh, so again, work with us, work with us and understand that we're humans too. And again, we're still wanting to make this work. And, um, you know, the people that have took the time to meet with us up until this point, you know, they understand that. You know, we they want to continue to meet with us if they knew that we weren't uh, wanting to do something special. So we just want to, uh, despite of the fact that it's storage, we also want to show you that the aesthetics are nothing like you've ever seen in not even Alabama, but anywhere else. And it's very secure. And um, so we're, we're, that being said, just wanted you guys to understand that. Again, it's it's the options are the rezoning or we fix the building. And there's no more entertainment for anybody. Mr. Pugh. Yes, sir. My option, my, uh, gosh, to carry this over is still on the table. If uh, if he wants to, to carry it over until the planning commission meets and does all this, uh, no one has any uh, more questions? would be the most prudent way to take care of that. Okay. Um, uh, I think uh, this I, might I be would, a good time. I, to I, 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 yeah, I would love to talk yeah, since I was just assaulted for no reason. All right. Um, yes, the, the floor is open. Sure. I mean, and I only heard part part of it. Uh, the beginning kind of cut out for some reason. But uh, I, you know, just for the record, the same complaints have been levied against the city far before I was involved or around. The same concerns about quote unquote targeting. And discriminating, and discriminating are things that were used, that when, were used when, when the business license was revoked license was years, and years, years and years ago. So for the record, you know, this is not a new, this is not a new tactic by the owners. And, and I, you know, I will, I will say for what it's worth, you guys have had years worth of time to try and do something positive and to move forward with it. And that's fine. I'm all for redevelopment. I would love to know, you know, you can throw all sorts of shade and say that you know people that live and work in Homewood that I used it as campaign fodder. I didn't once list it on anything that I put out while I was running for reelection. I have yet to, you know, use this as any kind of driving force <laughs> because quite frankly, it's not. And I'm just gonna be as honest with you as possible about that. The fact that you guys want to use that as some sort of, you know, deflection for, you know, addressing issues that are longstanding and anybody that knows, and especially you guys came just, uh, you know, about a month ago to a council meeting about reworking an intersection right by your, your property. You mentioned that you are there on a daily basis. Okay. Yet, for some reason, and this is not me putting it on the agenda, but for some reason, the property continues to get over, cited for overgrowth on a continual basis. There are things within, you know, there are, there are statutes and things that, and the ordinances that apply to any other structure, just like they apply to this one. And again, for the record, I listed a property on Hardwick Lane, also in my ward, that was also in bad shape. So it is not targeting, 
it is not specific to your building or your structure, but it is something that is prominent and people complain about it. And as you know, overgrowth and other ordinances largely in the city are complaint driven. So when I hear about it from people that are my constituents, it's my job to bring it up and see what the process is. To your point about trying to say that I'm hiding behind whatever, look, I, I've spent a number of, of nights away from home doing other meetings and other things. There have been multiple meetings for the abatement board where this item has been held over. It was identified as it was going to be held over before you know the meeting even happened. So in fact, one of those meetings was on an evening where I was already obligated to be in a meeting interviewing candidates for a Ward 5 position. And Mr. Isbell can speak to that because it was a night that he came in to interview for, for a Ward 5 council position. So that's, that's hogwash too, okay? At the end of the day, there, you know, the issue at hand is abatement or not. It's, it doesn't, it, we don't leverage things. I mean, that's not how the city works. We don't say, well, we're going to scratch your back. If I scratch yours, we try and follow the same process. We try to be fair with everybody that comes before a board or any other, you know, issue being cited for a problem. Okay. So at the end of the day, zoning or rezoning, it should not be from my understanding of you know, the legal stature, it should not be contingent upon something else. Now, does it mean that even if the abatement board does something with it tonight, that something's gonna happen tomorrow? No, I mean, there's still plenty of time to you know, move forward and, and make something, put something into works, okay? Um, I've spent many nights with the police department. I have heard that they get calls and that they are out there with multiple points of entry being, you know, being brought to their attention and that they've had to address it over the years. So again, that's, I'm not basing it off of anything other than I see it every day. I hear about it almost every day from people. And I, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's my job to bring all sorts of properties and all sorts of concerns through whatever city process applies to them. Um, so, and I would like to also point out for the record, and you can go back through and look at the meeting, the meeting minutes for the abatement board before now. You guys have had multiple meetings, multiple meetings, multiple meetings with the mayor and other council members. Never once have, have I been invited or brought into the discussion for any of that. So to say and to leverage and to try and throw me under the bus like I don't care is just, I mean, that's, that's garbage, guys. You know, it's, there is no, there is no sense of, you know, th th this has nothing to do with ethnicity, race, gender, creed, anything else. It has purely to do with ordinances and statutes that are on the books and, and making sure that I'm attentive to the needs of my constituents and the people that bring concerns to me. So, you know, again, you guys have had multiple meetings. In fact, I'll say on the record, you guys reached out to now who will be my ward mate in November. You hadn't reached out to me still. Okay. So don't, don't try and play that game. I just want everybody there at this meeting to be aware that I have made attempts to go through the right process to see what, you know, to, to see that the, the building is secured and, and cleared up the same way that any other property would. And again, Hardwick Lane being a prime example just in the last couple months. So. Okay. Hey, everybody, we, we got to stop for just a second. We've got to do some managerial stuff here, some meeting managerial stuff. So Wyatt. One of the issues right now, Wyatt, is that you've got your speaker on, and I know you've got to have it on to be able to hear, but it's echoing, so I've had to mute you. You're going to have to be in a position to mute and unmute yourself. I don't know if that means you have to walk up to the, to the screen up there, uh, but right now you're muted because it's echoing back through your speakers. So we're going to have to figure out a way to make this manageable because otherwise it's reverberating back. So you've got to either be right now. Okay. So just be right next to it. 
uh, so that you can mute and unmute. I'm going to, I'm going to unmute you again. Um, but then when you guys, if you need, if once anybody else starts speaking, just mute yourself. Uh, give me a thumbs up if all that makes sense. Why? Okay. All right. I'm on mute you here. I think there is somebody else that wants to speak. That's on the call too, just for the record. I would like to speak. If I may. That's fine. Let's get this straight first. Um, and we'll probably, I, I okay. think everybody will get a chance, but let, let's get this straight first. Cause we can't, he's got to be able to speak from his end. And until he's got that figured out, we, we've got to wait just a minute. Sorry. Just everybody just, just hang on. We'll get, we'll get it. Okay. Now I'm unmuted. May I speak? Yes, sir. Okay. Back to, uh, to response and to Mr. Wolverton. Uh, first off, when we say targeting, harassing, and discriminatory, that is not a tactic. If you were in our shoes with a shutdown hotel by said by city of, by people that live and work in the city, wrongfully shut down, and then you also have your building on the abatement board, a commercial building versus you keep emphasizing that one on Hardwick land, that's a house, that's not a commercial building. You have, and I get, I, I, I can appreciate that you want to see change in West Hollywood. I really do. And I, I, would, I would have loved to have met with you. My family and I would have loved to have met with you and discuss our, our redevelopment plans. And we would like to work with the city. And we have had great, really good conversations with other council members. Mind you, never with you. And the reason why you were not invited to these meetings has nothing to do with my brother and myself. We did not conduct those meetings. We did not initiate those meetings. Those are done. However, they were done. We had no, we had no influence on who we were supposed to invite. We didn't invite any of those people in those meetings. Those folks. Okay. Those then, 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 what, then what? Then what? Council members? Did you just have great conversations with? I mean, you just said it on the record that you had great meetings with other council members. And and so who who initiated those? I mean, who who who, who, who was at those? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll Give us a list of names. Yeah, I'll elaborate. Just give me just a moment, please. So first off, those meetings were conducted not by us. Okay. Secondly, uh, you wanted to speak about the overgrowth. We are a shutdown hotel, non-income producing business. And I get the overgrowth. We, we get it rectified every single time. There's never been a situation where we didn't. But what about those businesses that are in operation right now who have an overgrowth issue? You know, and we're not complaining about it. We understand. We gotta get it taken care of. We get taken care of. It's not work. You know, we we don't have that problem. It's no problem. Okay. As for police getting calls to our property, those calls are mainly conducted by me because when I find somebody breaking into our hotel, that's the first thing I'm gonna do is call Homewood Police. And every time they've come, they've been very helpful. They helped us out. They take care of the situation immediately. Homewood PD is always there to help us out, and I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, but you know, again. You want to sit here and uh, complain about the fact that we didn't we didn't invite and yes we did contact the other uh, Mr. Alamon we didn't contact you because you were in a runoff we didn't know who to contact so we're like we'll wait till this is done okay and Mr. Wyatt the future council president very nice person has been very helpful with us he has obviously been trying to contact you guys you and Mr. Alamon to conduct the meeting. And we were told that it hasn't, there's a date that's not going to work for you all. So we're waiting for that date to happen so we can meet with you. But again, on the record, we are not the ones that initiate those meetings. And, you know, so we can't do anything about that. And the last thing I want to tell you about is that please don't come out and saying that we're having a tactic. If you were in our shoes and you have one building owned by Indian people and then the rest of the commercial buildings in West Humble that are vacant and have severe violations owned by white people, what would you do if you were in our shoes? How would you view that? How would you view that situation if you were in our shoes? That's what I'm trying to say. How would you look at that? Whether they're complaint driven or not, well then maybe people need to start driving on West Valley Avenue and start complaining about the buildings on West Valley Avenue. And stop picking on our hotel. We're trying to redevelop the site. We want to work with the city of Homewood. We're willing to do it. We want to be part of the change. Our neighbors, Mr. Norris and his family, they're aware of it. They can come in and speak on our behalf. They're, they're obviously looking forward to seeing some change over there as well. We want to work together and let's do it. Let's do it. Let's try to avoid having us put a fraction of the amount of money that will cost to redevelop the entire site and having just put some money back in the building and just make it compliant. We don't want to do that. It doesn't benefit us. It doesn't benefit the city of Homewood. We want to see change. We can be a part of the change. Work with us so we can move forward and do it together. That's all we're saying. 
a point of clarification, uh, did the uh, person that just spoke, did they submit their permit and their um, information? In their proposal, uh, Mr. Love, they, they submitted a uh, an application to the planning commission for a rezone, as and they uh, along with that they presented a new site plan and uh, some conceptual drawings of what the site's going to look like renderings. Okay, thank you. And all that information has to go before the planning commission for approval, correct? That's correct. With that being said, I think we move forward and stop to the back and forth debate about a mute point, in my opinion, because the, um, the property owner has already submitted plans and proposals that have to go before a city board for approval. So to uh, Mr. Riddle's or board member Riddle's motion, I second the motion to carry it over until the next meeting to see, um, to allow the applicant or the property owner to have their plans and proposals reviewed by the planning commission and or denied or approved. Mr. Love, I stated I wanted to speak. Oh, I'm sorry, but you can go ahead, but that's, that's that's my motion. Okay. Um, for, the, for Mr. Patel, I'm, my name is Beverly LaBeouf and I'm a resident of Ward 2 in West Homewood. And it's the citizens of Ward 2 who were upset about your building, not the people of generally Homewood, but the citizens of Ward 2 where this building's located, first off. Second off, um, it, I am the one that acquired the minutes of the May 27th abatement board meeting and put them up on Facebook for everyone in the ward to see. And I've been the one that's been pushing that and it was not Mr. Welverton. So uh, I'm a little bit insulted by your remarks. It seems like you're talking down to the people of West Homewood Ward 2 and I don't appreciate that. We've complained about a lot of different facilities. The code, about, the code enforcement officer is who goes and looks at them and he makes a determination about whether or not to send that to you, the housing abatement board, not us, but we do complain a lot about your facility. And um, after all this time, we're glad that we're finally being heard. Um, and uh, lastly, I'm not real thrilled that you're asking for a rezoning. I think the GERD is um, gonna, used long enough with uh, businesses that were not allowed. And I'm saddened to hear that once again, someone else wants to build something outside the requirements of the GERD. And that does not make me any happier than I already am unhappy. Thank you. Okay, uh, first off, I was not in any way trying to insult you or anybody in West Homewood. Uh, but if you guys are complaining about other uh, our building, have anybody in West Homewood ever driven down West Valley Avenue and gone on back? We drive by the new, really remarkable looking West Home. I mean, the Homewood Police Department. Have you guys ever gone down there? Because I can guarantee, if you go there and look at those buildings up there on West Valley Avenue, you would not be thinking about our hotel. Also, um, if you the property has to be rezoned for us to redevelop the site. Otherwise, look. The options we have under the GERD district, number one, our, hotel, our properties are zoned as a hotel. So we would have the ability to, because we have the frame in the building to reuse, to make it an economy level extended stay hotel. Do you guys want to see that there? Because I know we don't. We don't, you've already have enough hotels in home. You don't need another one, to be honest. I, I feel that way. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but that's what we're currently zoned for, okay? So we can easily just gut the building, fix it and make it compliant for now, and then when the economy improves, we'll just take it into a hotel and just make it a hotel. That's not what we're trying to do. The other options we have under the guard district is to put a variety store there. What is a variety store? A store that sells inexpensive items such as a Dollar Tree or a Dollar General. I'm not saying that Dollar Tree or Dollar General is coming, but those are the type of stores you would see there. I'm not sure if that's very appetizing to anybody, but that's what, that's what we're zoned for. Also an auto repair shop. 
similar to like Jiffy Lube or something like that. That's what we're zoned for right now. So we appreciate your concern. And again, we wanna work with the city of Homewood and West Homewood particularly. We're trying to propose, and once you see our renderings, I think you'll have a different opinion of everything, I hope. Uh, but again, the only thing left on the table besides all that is to just repair the building. And we don't want to do that. We know you don't want to do that. We all want to see that building come down. So allow us to move forward and do it by redeveloping our site. It's all contingent on rezoning. We can make it happen. We can all work together and make this happen. Okay. But again, I just want to make sure you're understanding. This is how we feel. We feel targeted. We feel harassed. You're not going after the building of West Valley Avenue. You're not going after the Bagby Drive building. These other buildings have been for sale since 2006 and haven't been sold. They're sitting there rotting and falling apart, ceilings falling aside. I've got pictures and I can show you, I can send it to everybody in Homewood so you guys can take a look at it. I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus, but I, I we heavily feel like we're being targeted and harassed. And we've got, a, we've got a plan to redevelop this entire site. Allow us to do it. Please allow us to do it. We'll work together and make it happen. Yeah, let me say one thing. Uh, real quick, I do want to mention one thing. Hello? Go ahead. Go ahead. I do want to mention one thing, uh, back on the Mr. Wolverton, you know, mentioning about excessive growth. Again, we're not here for excessive growth. We're here for apparently a nice one. And so again, and you were under, you were aware that we have plans to do a redevelopment. You were well aware of that. And you said that you, you didn't know anything about it. But yet you've been, you've known good and well, we've been on the abatement board and we have plans and, you know, mayors came here to, you know, say things on our behalf. Again, just as much as you say you care about West Homewood, it shouldn't just be about our property. That's all we're saying. It should be about everything should be fair and ethical, whether it's one person complaining or a hundred people complaining or a hundred thousand people complaining. You have to be fair and ethical about everything that you do and approach when it comes to a matter like this. Again, this isn't just like moving a bunch of Lego blocks over. This is a, a very large structure, a concrete structure. And we want to make some positive change on the exit. We understand people want to see something going there. We get it. We, we were all about it as well. But the approach, you know, whether you and whether you weren't invited to any of those meetings, that was not done by us. And again, anything that was said, I had mentioned, it was not from our words. Those are words from people who live in, and work in the city of Homewood. We just want to make that clear. So if there was anybody that was taking me offense to that, that's not, we're not. But, but yet you won't name anybody that actually said that because it, they don't exist. I mean, that's the, that's the problem. Here's, here's the bottom line, guys. I live and work here. I, I'm in West Homewood all day long every single day of my life, okay? <clears throat> my kids go to school here, my family is here, my friends are here. And what I do know about the redevelopment idea and proposal that you guys have put forward is only what I've been able to gather from other people telling me what you proposed, okay? And I'm gonna be honest, what I heard at the last secret meeting or whatever meeting you wanna call it, where again, I was not invited, and I, I don't care who set it up. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if you're going to a meeting, you have every right as somebody that's going to that meeting to say, hey, I think it's important to have both members of this ward, you know, represented and, you know, invited to the table, which didn't happen. OK, so at the end of the day, what I've gathered, which, which I'm thankful that you guys finally went on the record today tonight with saying is that what I've gathered about the proposal is that it's gonna be mini storage, okay? And unfortunately, I know my constituents well enough to know that they're not gonna be excited about mini storage. I'm sorry, I don't think it matters how fancy or nice it looks on the outside. People just aren't gonna be happy about that, okay? Like that's, that's what I've heard from the people that you know, your, your meeting has disseminated to and, and, and that's all I have to go off of because you guys haven't invited me or asked me to the table to talk about what, what would West Home would want. And honestly, again, I'll point out that I don't think the abatement process is intermingled with a rezoning process. Those are two totally separate entities and I feel like they treat it as such. But I also think that it would be prudent for you guys if you're serious about wanting 
something good for West Homewood, I would invite you to go ahead and invite, not just me, invite the whole dang neighborhood to come and talk to you guys about what you're proposing and whether or not they like it or don't like it and whether or not they've got feedback and input that they can provide you guys on if they don't like it, something else that might be, you know, more mutually agreed upon. Because the feedback I've gotten from people that again, I didn't disseminate information to because I didn't have it to disseminate was that people were not, the people that had heard about the proposal were not, were not thrilled about it. And, and that's, that's just, that's what I've got to go off of is that the people that have been involved in the process that pass that along to some of my neighbors and other people that live and work in Homewood were not super thrilled about, about, about the proposal. And I think it's just, uh, again, you're muddying the water by trying to say that it's one versus the other versus the other. Yes, the Hardwick Lane property I did bring up. It was owned by a Caucasian lady. If you've got other properties that are of concern, let's go ahead and handle them. I'm sure the abatement board has time to go ahead and hear them all. And I'm fine with that. Let's clear them all up. But again, this is complaint driven. I hear about complaints. It's my job, you know, as a council member to handle the concerns of my constituents. And when you have a property that everybody literally sees on a daily basis, unfortunately, that, that you have a high likelihood of, of having complaints about it when, when it's not kept up right. And, and that's just, those are simple facts. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a game of chess. It's not me, you know, targeting anybody. You know, I, I've, I've got nothing against anybody of any ethnicity, gender, race, creed, or anything else, okay? But if you have a piece of property and, and the other people in, in the BEZ and other places can attest that when I've gotten complaints about other properties needing to be cleaned up around my ward, I've I brought it forward and we've handled it. OK, but I, I just right. don't I don't agree with stalling for an extended period of time and promising that we're moving forward on something when it just really seems like we're not moving forward on anything. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let Mr. Patel speak for just another moment, and maybe we ought to move forward uh, on the agenda. Um, if, if we can come to some some agreement, uh, some motion on this, I mean, I, I think at this point it either needs to, well, our options are we can either carry it over, um, we can drop it, or the board can send it to the council. So those are, those are the three options. Uh, be thinking about that while Mr. Patel uh, says his last uh, comment. And real quick, just one last thing for the record. If we're talking about treating properties fairly and amenable and, and being fair about everything, look at, look at the list of the abatement board properties. Look at the ones that you guys have passed on and look how many of those have been written off, delayed, taken off the abatement board, relisted. They're not there. So I feel like you guys have done more than your fair share of of you know, basically offering time and consideration to this particular property to have some sort of forward action plan. And again, we, we don't need to sit behind it and, and, and drag our feet anymore. Can I go? Yes, sir, you go ahead. Okay, Mr. Wolverton, Mike again. Uh, first off, uh, again, you'll have an opportunity to meet with us when Mr. Wyatt contacts you and Mr. Alamon to coordinate a date and schedule a time for us to meet with you. We are looking forward to meeting you so we can show you what we have. You're absolutely wrong about a mini storage. The word mini never came out of my mouth. It's a storage facility. It's completely different. It's like a, an exterior corridor motel versus a, you know, a high rise hotel, except this is not going to be a hotel. Uh, it's zoned for a hotel, but we're planning on bringing it down and redeveloping the site. And after you see what we have, I would think that you might be you might like what we have to what we have to, to develop on site. Also, um, it's not just storage. Yeah. Right, it's going to be a restaurant and retail in front of it too. So, and we have these two gentlemen back here who can elaborate more on that and explain to you, uh, you know, more about the development. Um, also, just to let you know about again, I get that you keep emphasizing the list of properties on this list. Can you tell me one commercial building that's made this list? No, there hasn't been one. And that's all we're trying to say is that ours made it. So if it's complaint driven by the citizens of West Homewood, we understand we want this building down too. More than you guys do, trust me, okay? But 
I urge everybody in West Homewood that lives in West Homewood to drive on West Valley Avenue and start looking at those buildings and be fair about it. Let's be fair. Start complaining about everything else too. Let's be fair about this, you know? Don't just complain about what you see. Complain about every building that may not be compliant. And again, we don't want to have to, you know, go to a point where we have to put money back in the building and make it compliant. That's not going to make us happy. It's not going to make you guys happy. And the property is just going to sit there until something else happens with the property. Let's all work together. And I think that we should start this way in a positive relationship. Let's work together and redevelop the entire site, make something happen on our site. I get GERD is what, uh, what was her name? Miss Beverly, that's what she wants to see. Again, ma'am, uh, based off our options, uh, you know, I've explained what options we can do there. And uh, it doesn't require rezoning. It's not something that would make anybody feel like a wow when they come off the exit. So I urge you to please go back on that uh, GERD district, uh, you know, uh, zoning of what, what business would be allowed there. Again, auto repair shop, variety store. These are things that we can do without a rezoning. You know, we can even make it an extended stay hotel, economy Mr. level, extended Mr. Stay hotel. Mr. Patel, I, I'm on the BZA and I have a copy of the zoning book. So I know very well what's allowed in the GERD and what is not. It's sitting right here next to me on the counter. I can read it. You don't have to tell me. All right. Uh, is there any statements or comments or questions from the public? I'm sorry. Repeat that, uh, Jeremy. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. Sorry about that. Is there any more statements or questions or comments from the public? That being the case, is there a motion on the table for this item? There is. My motion's still there. I move to carry it over until the Planning Commission looks at it. I second that motion. Wait, I still have some more questions for the Patel. Uh, Zach has, a, has another question or two. Hold on one second. Go ahead, Zach. Do you guys clearly want to redevelop the site? I think that's great. Uh, but if y'all don't want to keep the hotel, would y'all be willing to move forward with the demolition without having the rezoning in hand, or y'all are just going to hold off on that? Because my concern is that we hold off and we, we move it over to another meeting, and then we find ourselves in the same situation, you know, two months from now. I don't really want to get in that kind of pattern that we have. I would imagine they want the rezoning. Agreed. The want the rezoning? I would imagine they would want it. I would have, the city, I can pretty much tell you, doesn't like the hotel the way it sits. I mean, you guys don't either. You said that here tonight. Um, I'm interested to see what you guys have to offer. I'm sure the city council is and the planning and zoning, but well, yeah, I don't know if I necessarily want to carry it over to the next meeting. And and, and I'm just going to throw this out there. I mean, I'm not a member of the board, but it, it, think about this. Is, is what they propose to, to put in that place, is that relevant to our decision or the board's decision tonight to either send it to council, carry it over or drop it as an unsafe structure. Uh, that, that's, really the, that's really the extent of this board's, um, of this board's uh, concern is, is whether or not it's an unsafe structure. And uh, that being said, I, mean, I, I don't think this is the place where we should really get into presenting, you know, what's planned and looking at conceptual drawings. Uh, there'll be plenty of time for that at Planning Commission and City Council. Um, just for sake of efficiency tonight, look, look, maybe we could just sort of stay within our box. I agree. Agree. Second. Uh, that, that being said, um, um, Okay. All right. If 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 everyone would indulge, uh, there's one more comment that is want to be made, and then we'll move on. Just, uh... Hello, everyone. My name is uh, David Plummer. I'm with I'm a commercial real estate broker with a retail specialist. Um, working recently brought on by the Patels to help them with their redevelopment plans. 
I actually lived in West Emily Two Streets Mine Picture Park for seven or eight years. Um, grew up playing ice hockey at Alpine. Uh, for, for those of you that have been around long enough, understand um, that property. And I just want to make a quick comment from the standpoint of what Norris just did to that office building is a small catalyst in the right direction for that stretch and that corridor. This is another proposed big step in that direction. And I'm not here to influence any decisions being made, really just to enlighten you guys on the process from a commercial real estate redevelopment standpoint. Every unnecessary road bump slows that process down. And it's a very lengthy process to pull up projects like this that are multi-million dollar projects. So I share the same concern. Everybody drives fast, especially living over there for as long as I did. I saw it every day too. I totally understand it. Um, just wanted to give you my perspective from a commercial real estate standpoint. Their plan is to do a very modern, beautiful storage facility, but that would sit behind retail restaurants, which would front Oxmoor. So, um, and that's what uh, myself and my colleague, um, we're going to be retained by them to, to help facilitate. So, I think this would be a big catalyst to continue seeing that area redeveloped. Um, West Home is a beautiful place and has seen a lot of change. And I think this is the segment of that area that the corridor that could really make a big difference even further down uh, in Ball. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All Mr. Right. Pugh. Yes. This is Andy Gwaldney. I feel like Mr. Plummer's comments are relatively irrelevant to the topic at hand which is the condition of the hotel as it sits today as a public nuisance. The public nuisance can be abated by the demolition of the structure, which they have already declared is going to be a part of the plan. So why not abate it, give them 30 days to make a plan and present it to the city, and then they can move forward. Okay. Um, thank you. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Just because the time to come out of it, but I don't want to I don't want to keep just like kicking this can down the road on the abatement board. Yeah, I make a motion. Who, who is this? That was Gabe. This is Gabe. Oh, hi, Gabe. Uh, hi. You, you have a phone? Yeah, I make a motion. I make a motion to, Gabe, to move this. A motion I can meet all the food. Or, but that was to the planning commission. I'm, I'm not sure that again. I, again, I agree with Wyatt that the abatement board doesn't necessarily need to know their plans or what they're going to happen. I mean, there are issues with the building as it currently stands. That, well, either that, that's way, either way, the, uh, either way, the motion on the table will have to be rescinded before you can make another. Okay, sorry about that. It had been a while. Sorry. That's okay. Okay, Mr. So Pugh, Mr. point of order, if the topic at hand is not relevant to the issue, the planning commission vote is not relevant to the public nuisance abatement, would that not invalidate the motion on the floor? Uh, uh, you're, you're absolutely correct. The, the planning commission vote has nothing to do with this. It, is, am I understanding what you're saying correctly? So then it makes an invalid motion, essentially. So there's not really a motion on the floor. The motion. Uh, I rescind it in either way. Okay, so Mr. Riddle, you rescind your motion. Yes, all I would, uh, yes, my comment was only that it would need to be rescinded so that he can make his motion. It wasn't for any other reason, any other purpose. Okay, so um, taking both of those comments into consideration, do, do we have a, a new motion on the table? Yes, I make a motion. Motion. Was somebody saying something? Yeah. Yeah, I make a motion to move this to the city council as an un unsafe structure because the roof and other issues and obviously entry, you know, multiple points of entry within the building. I second. Okay. 
We have a motion and a second. And I, I just want to point out, um, <clears throat> I, I'm going to have to check, but uh, I, I did notice them one time before. I sent them an unsafe structure notice, which is would be the natural next step after this <clears throat> meeting. I did notice them once before, but then we came back. Uh, we convened again and the board voted to carry it over. So I'm going to have to check. I may have to legally send them another notice. Um, I'll check with Mr. Kendrick on that in the morning, but uh, that doesn't really affect this motion. I just wanted to let you all know that, give you a heads up. So the motion is on the table in the second. Um, the motion being um, to, that this, this structure is an unsafe structure and uh, we'll move forward to the next step. Uh, do all, all in favor say aye. 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 Well, let, let us go ahead and okay. I'm, I, I just don't think. I tell you what, I'm going to let, let Stephanie. I want a clarification. I, I want to know, I haven't been out to the um, property within the past month. Has any of the other board members gone out to the property? I have not been out there again. I've been so many times, uh, but when the original times I went, I didn't find a, any openings, but I'm not, that's not to say there's not any now. Right, so do we have any information or evidence that currently uh, displays the property as being an unsafe structure? I have drone footage showing the roof being peeled back if you'd like me to provide that, just as Andy. Okay, is that the, the same roof footage that we had from the beginning? With, with the flooding? Did that come through? No. We didn't I know. know. I didn't hear that, Andy. No. I said the footage that I have is from about a month and a half ago. I believe the previous footage was uh, garnered from a Norris injury lawyer's sign variance that had come across. About two like years ago. Footage. Yeah. So I've got some footage from, I think, about a month and a half ago. Maybe it, it, the latest is three months ago, but I do have some footage. Okay, well, I wish it was a way we can see that footage. Um, is it a way you can email it to Wyatt Pew or? And just for the record, the reason why I'm asking this is because if we as a board vote to um, consider it a public nuisance based on the structure of the building as it is currently, and we don't have any evidence that currently shows the property is a uh, unsafe structure other than an eyesore, then I think it would be a disservice and a disjustice just to everyone. That's why I'm asking this. At all. Mr. Love, I believe a lot of that will be handled, can be handled in the process before it gets to council confirmation of, of, of the public nuisance or the, the public hazard. So there's no way you can get the footage or photos to Mr. Y. Pew uh, or display them right now? No, I'm sitting at dinner, unfortunately. Okay. Well, I'll say to the board, um, and you all can vote however you want to. But I feel that, again, if we don't have any concrete evidence showing the current condition of the property being an unsafe structure, because I remember there was issues of um, boarded up windows or doors that were basically addressed uh, in previous months and years. And so what I would want to see is something concrete showing that right now the property is unsafe and it's more than just an eyesore before I would vote on it. Now you all have your own you know, vote and if, you can vote however you want to. If to the that, you don't, 
you don't have that information on any other pro any other abatement topic that you vote on. So, I mean, you have the reason it's on the abatement list is because it has it has been an unsafe structure. There's no proof that that unsafe structure has been remediated. So you don't have that proof in other cases. Why would you all of a sudden want to change and have it on this case? No, no I'm saying that currently right now, we do have proof that the windows have been boarded up. The doors have been boarded up. Uh, we, we don't have proof that any other issues currently exist structure wise with their property. I haven't been on the inside. I don't the know. The roof line. Well, that's why I'm asking for that proof, for that inf information to be submitted before I make my decision. I don't think that's how this process works, but. What, was it not stated in this meeting that there have been multiple times where police have had to come out to remove people from getting in the building, multiple points of entry? Was that not stated in this meeting? Correct me if I'm wrong. That the, the, the Patels said that they had been called? The Patels said that they've called HPD multiple times when things like that have happened. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. That's, that's, yes. So again, my question to the board members, do anyone, has anyone recently within the past week or month gone out to the property, inspected and has inspected any structural issues with the property? Do you have proof that the roof was ever remediated? That's, I don't, but I don't have any proof that, I don't have any proof of any condition of the roof right now as we speak. So I don't know if it's fixed, if it's damaged or what. I don't know, that's why I'm asking. I thought I heard about five or six votes. Uh, hey, everybody, Wyatt's having a, an audio issue. We're working on it right now. Hang on just a second, everybody. Sorry. Guys, I was to uh, leave this meeting at 615. Uh, maybe I can uh, curtail that. If I can step out for 10 minutes, I'll be right back.
he's going to he's going to try to leave and come back really quickly everybody sorry about this um and we'll be try to get right back in in target here Oh, can you hear us now? Oh, okay, great. I don't know. I just I left and came back and it just started working again. All right, thank you, Brian. All right, so everyone can hear us now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, all right. Um, so we were at the point, I believe, where where we, um, we were gonna make a decision, um, one of our three options. And I believe um, uh, Gabe Harris was making a uh, motion. Yes, I made a motion yes, made to a motion. issue another unsafe structure notice. Okay, all right. All right, do I have a second? A second. All right, uh, Stephanie, would you do a roll call vote? Mr. Riddle had to leave, by the way. All right, Mr. Love? No. Mr. Love? Jeremy? Oh, um. Did he leave? Uh, I don't know. Jeremy, are you there? What about you, Gabe? Hi. Hi. Okay, Gabe is there. Okay. Uh, Jeremy, are you back yet? All right. Uh, why? Why? There's a why in the chat. Uh, Stephen Norris wants to say something. Okay. All right. Well, while we're waiting, yeah, go ahead. That, that sounds fine. And Jeremy is back now into the meeting. Okay, great. All right, so Mr. Norris, go ahead. Yes, um, I, I didn't think I was going to be speaking up tonight because I thought what I would have to say would be relevant in the zoning meeting uh, more than here because what y'all choose to do with uh, the building being unsafe or not is not really the same thing which a few have alluded to as how it's zoned. I figured that that more where I would speak up or share some of my thoughts would be in the zoning meeting. Um, well, that, that's, that's still going to go forward. That's okay. not, that, so, that has nothing to do with this. Um, my thoughts on it were, um, I feel like what we, what I and the citizens definitely want is for the Patels to spend more money on the property. Um, I think, I mean, the, we see the building as often, if not more often than anybody, um, it stood strong. I don't know when it was built, um, but it stood strong that long. It stood strong and ugly for seven years. Um, I do think it's ugly. I do think it's an eyesore. I haven't ever thought it was going to come falling down. Um, I don't, I heard, I don't know, that was the developer or somebody that spoke up. I heard him say that he felt like it may delay or be a problem to demo it before getting any zoning approval to go through. I don't want anything that would be a disincentive to the Patels to move forward. If they have to go ahead and spend this money and demo it, then they have to decide whether they want to develop it or not, but they don't have any more pressure from this abatement. Um, I feel like leaving the abatement and carrying it forward would leave the pressure on them to push forward a development plan. And that's really what I want as their next door neighbor is more money spent there. I don't know how many millions and millions of dollars a new project would be, but I'd rather have that than a demoed building or than a gutted building that now all of a sudden is compliant and declared safe. But then there's no, there's no pressure anymore. Um, they've come in compliance and I've got either a, an empty lot next to me or I have 
a building that's been stripped to be declared safe now, but still just as ugly with no pressure to try to demo and, and develop it. So as a neighbor, I would love to keep this as pressure for them to have to present a plan and move forward with a development plan. Um, they've stated a willingness to do that. And I would much rather see something developed there than to have an ugly building brought into compliance that now it's safe, but still ugly or now it's demoed and they don't really have any big push to have to develop. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But with an abatement on the table, but carried over, then they, they have pressure to push forward development. Um, obviously that's y'all's decision, but that's my opinion on it. And I, you know, I would think that citizens, while want progress on the building, they're not walking across, they're not worried about the building being unsafe. They're worried about it being an eyesore and ugly. And I think that's probably best fixed by them developing it, not by them repairing the building or demoing the building. But it's, it's obviously y'all's decision, but that's just, just kind of my opinion of it being next door to it. Okay, thank you. Uh, just, to, just to point out one thing, this board uh, does not vote, does not have the power to actually condemn a building. What this board votes on is whether or not it should be recommended to the city council to condemn the building as an unsafe structure. So, so this is just a step in the process. It's a stepping stone. This is a recommendation board. Have um, there been any? Has there been any evidence of like a, a structural engineer or anybody declaring it as unsafe? Or just a picture. Unsafe, just a picture. It, it doesn't have to be structurally unsound to be unsafe i okay. mean simply a, a, you know a broken window that someone can get in or a, a door that's open there's there's any number of things mold issues anything like that can can be considered unsafe so this board makes a recommendation it's up to the city council ultimately to declare it a public nuisance okay. and okay. to condemn it so well, i just would uh, hope that we would get that to you a place that now they're compliant with whatever the current issue in front of the abatement board is and it'd be a you know a disincentive to them developing further as they currently seem to be wanting to do uh, i would think that the west homewood and the neighbor nearby would be best on continuing to want to spend money there. obviously we don't give them an unlimited amount you know, if they've, uh, that's my opinion. Mr. Norris, I brought up their development plan for people to see real fast. Um, this is really not, not in the scope of this board's uh, consideration, but uh, the uh, Patels would like everyone to see this is this is the uh, conceptual this is an awesome <clears throat> just uh, I guess so that everyone knows that they uh, they are they are moving forward okay so with that being yeah there, there's another one maybe in daytime right. um, that being said does does anyone um, uh, we have Gabe's uh, motion on the table and uh, did you hear your second stands? It does. So um, this would be a motion for this board to recommend it as an unsafe structure. At this point, I would send them a notice. They would have 60 days to do something. Other, and after that point, uh, it would go to city council for a public hearing. And everyone who wants to speak for or against it may may also voice their uh, their concern or support at that time. Um, and at that at that meeting, City Council will make a real decision. So uh, tonight our vote is a recommendation or the sports vote, I should say. So Stephanie, would you take a roll call vote of the motion and second? All right, Mr. Love. Nay. Nay. Mr. Harris. Aye. Aye. Mr. Isbell. Aye. Mr. Riddle had to leave, correct? Okay, so we only have three left here. Mr. Riddle had to leave um, in three as a quorum without, uh, without a complete unanimous vote uh, with only three here. It, it does not move forward um, to city council as a recommended unsafe structure. Um, 
So, Mr. Riddle did say he was coming back. But, uh, oh, he, he sent me an email. He didn't say anything to that effect to me. Um, he said he thought he was going to be 10 minutes and he'd be back. He's still on the call, too. Okay. Uh, you you want to... Um, Yeah, we, we could make that mo you you can make that motion if it yeah we'll vote on that. Um, yeah, I would say that the the motion would have to be the existing. Or does it just stand because it didn't? <laughs> point in the okay, uh, this gets a little muddled. Um, <clears throat> okay, if if the. Okay, I tell you what. Um, if we can give it, we can give it ten more minutes. Um, we'll just we'll we'll hold off on, on pronouncing the vote as complete, um, pending the return of uh, Mr. Riddle. He was here for the entire discussion. Uh, he just had to duck away for a second. So the, the vote is 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 incomplete at the moment. We're going to move on to another item, and uh, we'll we'll step back and and finish taking that vote when he returns. Um, perhaps uh, if anyone sees Mr. Riddle return, <clears throat> give me a heads up. I'm back. All righty. That was quick. Um, I'm sorry. We were taking the vote. Um, I believe you heard the motion. Uh, did you? On the you uh, sending it to the council? Yes. Yes. Uh, how, do you, how do you vote? How does the vote stand at this point? Kathleen, would you mind reading the vote for Mr. Riddle? Mr. Love is a yes. Mr. Harris is a yes. And Mr. Isbell is a yes. Want a clarification? I voted Jeremy. no. No. Jeremy. And I thought the last one said no. No. Let's, let's retake that roll call vote now that everyone's here. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, Mr. Riddle. No. Mr. Love. No. Mr. Harris. Aye. Mr. Isbell. All right, Ms. Alex. Is uh, uh, Bryce is here? Has she popped in? She's not here. Okay. All right, so it's two to two. And as I understand it, that um, tie, tie votes fail. Is that correct? Does everyone understand that? That's, that's what I was taught. So, um, yes. so as it, that, that motion fails. Um, moving on to the second item, 2757 BM Montgomery Street. Uh, this one was carried over. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Appreciate it. 2757 BM Montgomery Street. Uh, this was carried over from last time. Um, I do have <clears throat> we just came in today, and we, we actually have two properties and, and they're they're side by side. Um, there's the 2757 and then the 1705 25th Terrace South, but uh those Camera phone. Those aren't side by side, huh? Can anybody hear me? I'm here. Yeah, his Wyatt, camera went out. Wyatt, we lost you again.
He's joining back again, guys. Just give it a second. I'm sorry about that. Can everyone hear me? Gotcha. All right. I'm sorry. The city's Wi-Fi is desperately slow, and I think it's just a little, little bit more than it can take. So I was in the middle of reading this. Please note there will be areas of rot or damage in the structure, which has caused soft floors. So contractors should take precaution and identify these areas and provide supplemental support as necessary. In other words, um, when we see that kind of comment all the time. What that means is an engineer should draw plans for to, to reinforce, rebuild this structure. Um, it, 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 he was careful to say that it is adequate to work in and remodel, but I mean, almost everything is. Um, it, it, this, this does need an engineer's plan to move forward, but it certainly can be done. Any comments? Yes, um, my name my name is George Terry. Um, I know about that structure, really both structures. So I have hired. Well, I'm working with Tim Croker. He have done business with the city of Hallward on a few properties. So I'm working with him to work on that property um, to start a little work. If the city allow me to get a permit for, of uh, starting with the front porch. And I also uh, spoke with a roofer, but he said he won't um, be able to begin work until the spring because of the pandemic. Uh, for the bit, for um, the property on 1705, that has been, um, I've been doing a little work on it myself, trying we'll to get it up. up to the standard. We'll take that up at a separate meeting. That, that's a separate issue. So thank you for sending the report. But today we're talking about the 2757. We'll just leave okay. it at that. All right. Thanks. OK. So um, like I said, I've been working with um, Tim Croker. Um, he have a construction company. So to get started working on the front porch, if the city allow me to get a permit in the next two to three weeks. Okay, any comments from the uh, board members? I really would like to have had the opportunity to go in the structure the other day. I, um, I met with the, uh, I think it was Mr. Terry over at his, the structure, but um, he's, the engineering's report, uh, if it requires an, an engineer to uh, draw the, the plans for the weaknesses in the floor structure for it to be safe, then uh, I guess we need to get that uh, before we can go forward. I mean, I don't know how to, what, what could, is your opinion? It could be rebuilt as long as yes. it's rebuilt. It, it doesn't, um, an engineer would not necessarily have to, would not necessarily have to draw up the whole thing but an engineer would probably need to uh, specify what needs to be put exactly, in. Exactly, exactly. Yes, when it comes to repairing an existing old structure, uh, you can't just follow the building code because yeah, nothing right. really, lumber's not the same. And so would that, would that be something he would need prior to getting his permit from you? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think, well, I think- I can't. I think it'd be irresponsible of me to issue a permit exactly. for the structure without some kind of a uh, an engineer fix. Oh well, why have an engineer when it's a a reputable company that have men that can rectify this situation? I feel like I'd be going backwards because a structural engineer to draw plans costs one hundred and fifty dollars an hour, and that can be money that I can spend 
on fixing the structure just so he can draw our plans and so we can follow. Well, here's another thing I could I could offer you. If you have a licensed contractor, someone who's a like a licensed Alabama home builder who can put together a plan, a repair plan or a reinforcement plan, um, I think something like that, I think something like that would be acceptable. Um, that's something we've seen before. Uh, someone with someone with a lot of experience repairing old structures. Uh, I just don't want to have a situation where 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 you're going in there, maybe just propping up where it looks like it's sagging. Um, you know, just kind of just kind of playing it by ear. Uh, that can that can kind of bite you. Um, so yeah, if you had someone who's a licensed contractor who can draw something up that meets code. Um, and in, in his or her right. experience, is a good fix. I, I would accept that. Um, uh, um, excuse me. Do you mean actual drawing or you just want it on paper what he can do with bullet points? I mean, because most <laughs> most contractors might not can't be able to draw that good on specify what he want, what I That's want. That's right. That's right. A, a licensed contractor wouldn't wouldn't have to provide me, you know, professionally stamped drawings because they don't have a stamp. Um, these would just be drawings that were provided by the by the contractor, and um, they, they do it all the time. They okay. do it all the time. Right. Um, if, if I might inject, uh, you know, all it needs is the, the contractor to uh, point out where the girders are and how he's going to, you know, uh, support them and and uh, how the floor joists will be tied into it so that it would be structural sound again. He can do that on just, uh, uh, you know, a piece of paper and show the size of the materials and what's there now and what's he, what he's going to do. I think that's what Mr. Uh, Pugh is asking for. Oh, oh, okay. All right. This is Mr. Love. I would concur with the uh, board member, Mr. Riddle and Mr. Pugh uh, with the city. Uh, if we as a board can get something on paper from a licensed contractor uh, that, that documents the work that he can do and that needs to be done, um, that in my opinion, uh, is is suffice enough? Uh, okay. Um, excuse me. I would like to say something, please. Go ahead. Since my financial status is a little bit limited, I would like to see if how I can do this project in a, in phases. Um, do I necessarily have to do all of this at one particular time or can I be take my time and do it out in phases? Like I spoke to the contractor and we were going to work on the front porch first and then go from there. So I'm asking the abatement board, can I do it like that? That's if this were just a regular non- uh, non unsafe structural job, I would of course say yes, but this that's up to the abatement board. So uh, I, I think, this, I think the, uh, I think the uh, unsafe uh, portion of the flooring needs to be repaired first. Uh, the cosmetics can come next. Uh, you know, in order to, to get your permits, you're going to need those drawings, and uh, and uh, then Mr. White can issue a permit for you. Okay, that's that's fine, sir. Well, I'll take care of the the floor part first. Hey, are there any further comments from the public or board members? All right, there being none, um, do I have a? I would like we to have. Hello. Go ahead. Hey, Michael M. Hoff at eight seventeen uh, down the street. And I may be a little late to the party, sorry, uh, but I would like to mention, I, I'm just kind of trying to wrap my head around this. Um, so is this, it's not the owner's primary residence and are we discussing uh, the plans to fix it up or uh, are we discussing the plans to possibly sell it or is that in the discussion? It's not in our purview, it's my thoughts on it. Uh, well, we was, Mr. Michael, we was talking about me 
getting a licensed contractor to work on um, the the sub jorts in the in the flooring. Gotcha. Okay. And seeing if the abatement board will let me take the necessary steps to do it in phases. Okay. When you now I'm willing to work and get the structure up to a, up to code, if you will, if the abatement board allow me to do so. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay, uh, I just wanted to check. Thank you. Okay, if I might say one other thing, uh, Wyatt. Okay. Mr. Terry, when, when, uh, when I was talking uh, earlier about the floor first and the front second, if you could, you know, just structurally make the floor sound first and then move to the uh, cosmetics on the front, you'd probably uh, get less hassle from the neighbors in the, uh, on your properties. So that well, would be my, my suggestion to you. I, I completely understand, um, Mr. Riddle, but it's really not the neighbors, it's the city of Homewood. Oh, okay. I want to just make that clear. Okay. And um, and I'm willing, if you're willing to work with me, I'm willing to make something happen. So we are, I can take care of the structural problem. Okay. And um, I have a question, Mr. Riddle. What I need to do to get this off the abatement list for good? What necessary precautions I need to take to get it off the abatement list? And can I get it in writing? Well, <clears throat> first it has to be a safe structure, but I'll let, I'll let Mr. Wyatt Pugh discuss the portion of coming off the abatement board. Uh, whenever he's uh satisfied as the uh, if the uh, uh unsafe structure is taken care of then uh i would assume it would come off that's so, right um unsafe structures uh, an unsafe structure doesn't doesn't specifically mean a, a structure that's structurally unsound um, it can be a structure with broken windows. It can be a structure with doors that don't lock. Um, well, abandoned, abandoned. So as long if if you fix this house or this structure up to where it is uh, essentially a livable structure, um, then it's it's no longer in any danger of, of coming before this board. Even if it's not livable, it, it, if it's just if it's just buttoned up and, and cleaned up um, to where it's not where it's not a hazard to anything to where it's not a not a not a harbor for pests and it's not a, a possibility where people curious children and, and vagrants and such could get inside um, just just a, a, a cleaned up buttoned up house well That's the way I know how to I completely understand, Mr. Pugh, and um, it is clean, but I'll take care of the structural part first and then move to the cosmetic part in the front and go from there if you allow me. Because it looks like if everybody have any type of mold or anything, we're going to be, everybody at home, we're going to be moving out of their houses, <laughs> coming from the basement to the bathroom or, or even your closet. <laughs> so. But I get it, Mr. Pugh, and I understand. So if you allow me to do that, I'll be glad to work with your city to make it done. Okay, well, thank you. Um, do I have a, a motion? We, I, as I mentioned before, we have three options. Uh, we could, could vote to recommend it as an unsafe structure, um, to send it to council, we could drop it or we could carry it over, the board can. And do I have a, a motion? Uh. I would like to ask the property owner uh, how long do he think he could probably get um, the plans from the licensed contractor? How soon? Uh, well, next week I'll go um, give him a contact next week and um, see if he can whip something up for us to structure goals for us. Um, for us to floor George and um, go from there. If Mr. Pure, give me the permit. We'll be able to go with Red to Rock within three weeks. Thank you. 
Mr. Chair, I think you know, what we normally do on this is carry it over until you get something uh, in right, you know, to show Mr. Pew to get your permitting. And then okay. the, the work's begun and then you and then you'll be uh, home free. So to speak. That, 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 okay, Mr. Riddle, that'll, that'll be fine, sir. Mr. Terry, if you bring me sufficient plans uh, to make the repair, I, I'll issue you the permit. Uh, you have the right to abate the situation. I'm not going to stop you from doing work on your house legally. So, yeah, you, you have the, the, the right, but uh, just get get with a contractor and bring me some plans. And, uh, and, and perhaps would you like this to be on like on notebook paper? How do you want it? Because, you know, I don't want to bring it up there and you say, no, nah, I need something else. So I'm trying to write down what you want it. How do you want it? Well, a, a licensed contractor's going to be done it before. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, you, you get a licensed contractor, he's going to be, he or she's going to be familiar with submitting plans, residential right. plans right. That, that don't have to be stamped by a, an, an architect. So, so just um, just get with someone and, and put together a plan and and come and see me and yeah we'll we will uh, look forward to getting you getting you started down that road. No, oh, okay. And um, will it be removed off the abatement list or would you have specific bullet points that I need to get taken care of first? Well, it, at this point, it's up to the board to to drop the issue. And they will drop the issue once it gets to a safe level. I'll be glad to discuss that that threshold with you. Um, we yep, will make yes. a plan. Just come sit down with me. We'll make a plan. I, I you know, it's it's. it's so, so I make a motion to carry this over until. I make a motion to carry it over until such time as he gets the information to. I second. Okay. Motion and a second. So, Stephanie, would you mind doing a roll call vote, please? Mr. Riddle? Yes. Mr. Love? Yes. Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Yes. Mr. Isbell? Yes. Okay, so that passes unanimously. Um, so, uh, Mr. Terry, I'll look forward to seeing you with uh, with some plans and a contractor and um, get you moving forward. Okay, thank uh, you, sir. Thank you for being patient. Yes, sir. Uh, moving on to 1681 Ashwood Lane. This is the um, this is the townhouse. Um, this was carried over since last time. Um, I did reach out uh, to remind the homeowner that today would be the meeting. I don't know if he's got my message though so he may or may not uh may or may not be with us but um if you are speak up please um, okay it doesn't sound like he's here um th this is I, I've, I've done a little bit of um looking into this situation since the last time we spoke about it this is a um this is a townhouse that is in a townhouse row that does not have a homeowners association. Right. Um, because of that, we've had a um, um, we we've had one homeowner who's let some issues come about that involve um, uh, uh, some, some rot in the siding, like it's developed a hole in the side of the uh, of the envelope. Um, and then the rotten deck on the back and some rot around a chimney and some other things we discussed kind of at length and I've got all the pictures if anyone wants to see them. However, there's, there's nowhere to go on this thing um, that I can see that the city has any, the city has any leverage. I, I can write him a citation for a hundred dollars for property maintenance violation. Um, but let's just say the board recommended 
to issue an unsafe structure notice. I did so, and then it ended up going to council. What's council going to do? How, do you, how are you going to condemn a townhouse? We can't go in and tear it down. The city can't go in and make repairs. We're not going to go in and remodel the person's house or repair the person's house. That's not, that's not, that's not what municipal resources are for. Um, I, I'm at a loss on this one. Any, anyone have any, any thoughts on this? Uh, what, where, where do we go with this one? Have you checked with Mr. Kendrick to see what our options are? No, no. Uh, the only other thing, you know, I, I see your, your quandary there. Uh, if he, if he stops the leaking roof and closes up the uh, entrances that uh, are there and is working on it, uh, then uh, I guess you'd have to, you know, my suggestion would get with Mr. Kendrick and see what we could do to, you know, ex expedite those things. I think Mr. Terrell uh, spoke last time that he would do the things, but it was just going to be time to, you know, carry them out. I'll, I'll be glad to meet with Mr. Kendrick, the city attorney, uh, and see if there's anything from my end I can do beyond writing a citation uh, for property maintenance violations. But um, I can't, I can't go fix the house, and I, and no. I can't tear it down. No. Can't fix it. Down, so, well, since uh, since the problems are. Uh, uh actually uh affecting others that live there as well in their uh structures uh then there might be some legal aspect that could be done i don't know mr Pugh. it's just we've never had that normally you have a homeowners association and and they take care of these kind of things right that's what a homeowners association does um, right. mr terrell did you have a, did you have a comment sir Um, unmute yourself. There you go. My name is uh, Charles Terrell, and uh, I would like to speak. Um, I realize that there may be an unusual circumstance with this, but it does affect immediately the townhome on each side, and um, it seems like there there should should be some kind of provision either an international code, Alabama code, uh, state, state code or county code that addresses a structure that's attached to another structure somehow. So I was, I was wondering if the lawyer maybe could go through that and try to find- The homeowners association is the remedy for that. Well, we don't have an HO. Uh, we do have a, a an unsound homeowner has a lawyer that might possibly find a code that might address it. Uh, the problem. Uh, ask him. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. The problem is that if there are not immediate, rather, it's imperative that repairs begin rather quickly because the structure will become unrepairable. And that would bring down two more structures on each side. And it's definitely gonna happen if this guy is allowed to continue ignoring the situation. And he's had plenty of time, like about a year now to try to address the problem and has totally ignored it. And I've even offered him financial assistance, which he he never responded back or replied that he was willing to accept it. And uh, two prior neighbors before have previously offered him assistance too. He, he refuses to acknowledge that there is even a problem that exists that will affect other people in this development. And they're really getting tired of it, all of them. So we need to get some answers on this.
Yeah, I, I definitely hear you. I understand your frustration. I just don't know where where the where municipal resources come in on this. I, I, does anyone on the board, any board members, have any um, comments or thoughts or or anything? Since there's no HOA, maybe there's you know it's it's civil. It goes to you know I don't know, Mr. Pew. Uh, that's the reason I guess Mr. Kendrick has to direct us. Yes, I, I will. I'll reach out to Mr. Kendrick tomorrow. Um, I'm 99% sure he's going to say it's a civil matter, right? And it will need civil court. But um, I, I'll get that answer. I'll get that answer. All right. I'll get that. Answer. I, I, won't, I won't let another week go by. I'll, I'll, I'll find out what Mr. Kendrick says on that. Uh, uh, I just have a I just have a question. I'm a homeowner, uh, several doors down from that, and uh, you all have sent repeated letters. And in last month's meeting, it was agreed that he would show response and uh, make some progress or some, show some plan for making repairs. Uh, so what becomes of that? I mean, if he totally ignores that, you've obviously not heard anything back from him. Nothing appears to have happened since then. Uh, he is still living at that residence. He is next to, and y'all incorrectly said, Mr. Terrell. Mr. Terrell is one of the neighbors that adjoins him. But uh, the person who lives there, the resident, has obviously not responded to your letters. He was to give a plan by this month's meeting showing what he was going to do and a time frame for beginning some work on it. So what becomes of that? We can't. We have, thank you. We have no, um... We have no recourse other than to issue a citation, uh, a property maintenance violation citation. Um, it's it's a private property, um, unless, this, as I've as I've said, we can't go in and fix it up, and we can't tear it down. Um, it's 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 kind of a situation where we were hoping that the homeowner would move would move forward in good faith on his. Uh, indication that he would bring back some plans to us this month uh, that hasn't happened and it's very unfortunate uh, in terms of what can I what can I do to him for that um, I don't know um, and I need uh, we really needed his cooperation in this and uh, I sort of felt like we had it but I guess it's I guess it's disappeared so it's frustrating um, did any did um, members have any comments? I'll just yeah. Say one more thing. yeah. Wait, you can let the, you can let the, uh, I'm sorry. Did you say something? Are you talking? No, you can go ahead, sir. Oh, thank you. Um, it's my understanding that the, uh, abatement committee board can make a re recommendation for condemnation. Okay, well, let's, let's suppose that you, you decide to do that. Then it goes, rather you recommend, you recommend it as being on a safe structure, which it already has been. So therefore, it, is it not possible for it to go, still go to the city council for condemnation? Yes, that's possible, but it's not really responsible of me to put the city council in a position to do something that really is impossible. Um, I, again, I, I think the best next step from here is to probably get the city attorney involved uh, and, and see what he recommends. Um, it's not something we normally do at, the, at this level, bring in the city attorney but uh, perhaps in this case, that might be a good idea. Okay. Okay. That's our uh, best, uh, best next step. Being that it is a uh, house, a separate house, it's uh, duty, um, not duty free, but uh, what's the term you use for uh, 
I can't think of where I'm trying to say. But anyway, it is a separate entity in being a house. You know what I'm saying? It's not part of an apartment building. It's a house owned by an individual. And it's common for houses to be condemned. So I, I'm, I'm wondering why can't this house be condemned and then something be done at that point to remedy the situation? What, what would you suggest would be done? Uh, I, see, uh, I, I think that if the property is condemned, the owner would need to move out because it is a condemned property. And then someone may be able to purchase the property and fix it up. Or the present owner may get exasperated and sell the property to someone who might be able to rehab a condemned property. The city doesn't have the right to, to remove someone from their, from their private property. Private property laws are enshrined in the the constitution and it's it's very it's very it's not really a city's place to kick someone out of their private property. Well, well let's say that you say that, that would have to go through the court system. The water is not running, the gas, you know, uh the individual property has been condemned. It's my understanding that a person cannot live in a condemned property. It takes more than that to get them out of it, Mr. Terrell. Right, it takes a note, um, an order of ejectment, and that has to come from a civil court, a civil judge. Uh, the city, the city has no no right to do that. Well, well, it seems that you know if if this property is given a chance to be placed by the city council in a condemned status, that there will be the possibility that someone could purchase property and rehab it, or else the owner of present rehab the property and sell it. Well, sure, those are great ideas, but that's, that's, not, that's not the place of municipal government to enforce and to force to happen. So um, I think at this point, uh, I think the best thing for me to, the best next step is to discuss this with the city attorney. Okay. Uh, so okay. I'm gonna do that. Do I, do I have a, a motion from any of the uh, board members or any other comments? I'm, I'll make a motion to carry it over if everybody else is uh, finished discussing. Until you uh, find out from Mr. Kendrick what our options are. Okay, uh, we'll take a roll call vote on that. Yeah, I seconded, by the way. We yeah. don't mute that. We, oh, I'm sorry. We were on mute. Yeah. Zach seconded. I'm not hearing. Mr. Riddle? Yes. Mr. Love? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. And Mr. Isbell? That was unanimous, correct? Yep. Okay, that was unanimous. So uh, we're going to carry it over. I will speak with the city attorney tomorrow and um, find out exactly what our what the city's latitude is on that. It's a tough situation. I'm sorry for what you all are going through. I really am. Thank you for joining us. Um, next one up, 2916th Place South. Um, hopefully, all of you have gone and seen this one. This one's been if you can even see it, it's so completely overgrown <laughs> by trees. But um, la um, last week or the week before, I believe, uh, Scott Cook took it to the city council to get a uh, condemnation uh, pronounced on the state of the yard where, um, where they could move in and um, clean up the, the, yeah. the nuisance and then place a lien for that, but uh, not for the actual property. So... Um, any, any, any I think comments? Would, I think that would have to be done before we could see what, uh, if anything, needs to be done to that structure. From what I gathered when I looked it over. 
Okay, so do I understand you you were not able to ascertain the, whether or not it's an unsafe structure? No, not really. It is so grown up around it. I mean, it's awful. It's awful. Were, were there any other comments from any other board members? Yeah, this is Jeremy Love. I went out there the other day and uh, it's still pretty much in the same condition that it was um, previously, years back, overgrowth, uh, excessive growth. Uh, it, needs, it needs a lot of weed abatement, basically. Uh, and it's hard to tell the actual condition of the property or the structure itself. Uh, excuse the sirens, that's Homewood Fire and Rescue. But um, <laughs> uh, it's hard to tell the, the, to the, the condition of the structure itself based on the weeds. And so um, that may be a, a separate issue that the city, I believe, is already uh, in the process of addressing. Um, but as far as being an unsafe structure, minus the property, with all those weeds, in my opinion, it's just an attraction for rodents. Rodents and trash. I didn't see any trash. I, I can't say that. Um, but with that many bushes and uh, brushes and trees and what have you, I, I can't I can't help but see animals going that way. So maybe we need to uh, carry this over. What about having a meeting next month, uh, Mr. Pugh? Since we have some carryovers that might need addressed. I'm open for that. Just um, let's just decide on a on a day, or we can just okay. say. Uh, well, you can notify us on that. But uh, what do you yeah, know? How I, do you know how long it'll be before Scott gets this? Uh, they can get it cleaned up. That would be the the uh, thing that would set I, the time. I can check with Berkeley on that. See okay. see where they stand. Okay. All right, I'll follow up with Berkeley. Um, do, do I have a, a motion and a second? I move to carry it over until uh, such time it's cleaned up enough so we can see the structure itself and check it out. I'll second that motion. Okay, uh, motion and a second. Um, Stephanie, would you please do the honors? Mr. Riddle? Yes. Yes. Mr. Love? Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Harris? Yes. Yes. And Mr. Isbell? Yes. Okay. That, um, that'll be carried over. Um, hopefully, uh, I'll keep an eye on that. I'll let you know when, when Berkeley says they're going to get to getting it cleaned up and we'll get out there and take a closer look at it at that time. Thank you. Uh, moving, on, moving on to the next one, 1627 Salter Road. Uh, this one came up before. Um, it was for a, a <coughs> garage built onto the side that was falling down and um, that ended up getting sent to council and council, um, I believe council did condemn it, but uh, they ended up they ended up tearing it down, just the, just the garage. But now um, the property has been empty for a while. I started getting a lot of complaints about a bad smell coming from the house. Uh, when I visited, I didn't observe any smell, but um, there's, uh, if you walk around it, you see it's just a general disrepair. The, the, um, it's just in general disrepair. Um, any comments on that? When I, when I went out and looked at it, 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 I didn't get an odor either when I was there. I didn't, I didn't smell anything. I didn't notice the cornice was in uh, need of repair. Uh, but as far as the house, it didn't look like something that was unsound, you know, that it could be made a little bit habitable again, if that's what the owner wants to do. But it sure is an eyesore, and that's not something that's in our purview other than just general maintenance, I wouldn't think. Yeah, I went by today. I didn't notice any smell on Salter. Um, I just noticed a lot of exposed piping cables that were dangling from the the house. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I saw the uh, 
Did you see where the electrical entrance yeah. was tied off with a? Now that may be an unsafe yeah. deal right there, Mister Pugh. Uh, they have a one of the little ratcheting type, uh, or just a one inch bungee, not a bungee, but just a, a strap like you buy at uh, Harbor Freight somewhere, tied to the electrical entrance cable and tied over to a tree, I think, to keep yeah. it off. The, off the gutters you know there's that the the back yeah. patio or part of the house there yeah. there yeah. like Something the stairs were gone to the, the door and the uh yeah. the the air conditioning unit sitting underneath the back back stoop yep is that the electrical panel <laughs> yeah I don't know if you all noticed this, but there's this um, grounding wire that, that they have attached to a post oh. um, that's also attached up there. And, and I, I, for the life of me, couldn't figure out what they were trying to do with that um, other than perhaps ground off one of the, um, maybe even the um, telephone it was maybe a ground, but it was draped across the top of the electrical box, and it just looked very, uh, yeah, very haphazard, and just not, <laughs> not, not something you want to see. Um, so anyway, that, that I just thought I'd throw that out there. I saw that. Is this the property where Stanford owns it, and they're agreeing to have monthly like meetings with the community or city council about it? Yes. Okay. The only issue I had at the time, other than what y'all already said, was that back patio, but they've torn it down since then. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on that electrical, Mr. Peter, you think that needs addressing as an unsafe uh, issue? I'd like for an electrician to look at it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with, even with the entrance cable being tied off to a tree, you know that. Uh, that's not something that's uh, in code. That would be. Okay. I just noticed that we have a, a possibly a resident, Elizabeth, uh, wanting to speak to this issue. Are you, are you on here? Yes, I'm here. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, okay. Ignored the background noise. We're past that time. But um, yeah, we're, we live across the street from 1627 Salter. Um, there's still a structure that doesn't have staircases going to it. It looks like it could fall down. Um, the, that's the one I was talking yeah. about earlier. Yes, that in the back. Yeah, the, the doors desolate. are not secure to this property. Um, and people can just walk into it, and then when people have opened that bottom door, there's a that's where they, the smell has come in. Um, actually, a news crew was out there, kind of snooping around, and they were actually spoke to this on ABC 3340. The smell. So there's definitely a mold issue. Um, I also like to say that I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. Uh, we walk around the neighborhood frequently, and with the electrical issues, um, it, it's just no telling. Lo there's loose bricks, there's trash, um, just just any number of safety issues. We are glad that the carport structure has been removed, um, but it's kind of just uh, the issues keep coming as you keep removing structures. So um, we would we would like to see the house go, ideally. But with the with the electric with the electrical uh, issues, uh, maybe we could deem it an unsafe structure and send it, you know, on to get the council to take care of it. Thank you. That'd be great. I, I make, yeah, I make a motion to deem it an unsafe structure. Does anyone care to second that motion? Okay, there being no second to that motion, it um, it dies. Um, do I have any other any other motion? Jeremy, do you have a? Do you have a Was there a recommendation to get a elect electricians? um opinion from electrician 
Uh, I my, my motion actually was to send it as an unsafe uh, structure uh, or condition uh, to have it re remediated, you know, remedied that way. Uh, because without doing that, we're not assured that anything's going to be done. Okay, maybe I misunderstood. Uh, uh, it sounds like what Gabe was also proposing. Um, uh, sorry, yeah, I, I'm sorry, James. I didn't catch that you made a motion. I'm sorry, Gabe. Uh, it, it, was, it wasn't announced. I should have, but uh, I apologize. So if you make an, you make a motion, uh, I'll second your motion. Okay, so Gabe's motion was to go, go ahead, Gabe. Why don't you restate it, please? Yeah, yeah. I make a motion to declare it an unsafe structure. Second. Okay, with a motion and a second, with Stephanie, would you please take the vote? All right, Mr. Riddle. Yes. Yes. Mr. Love? Yes. Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Ms. Bell? Okay, that passes unanimously. So I will send out an unsafe structure on that one, and they will have 60 days to uh, abate the uh, unsafe condition, or it will go to city council for consideration for condemnation. Um, moving on. And just note that. Okay, uh, moving on to 1708 Ridge Road. Um, this was one that uh, uh, James brought up last time. Um, uh, I went out there and took a look at it. I, looks like a pretty, pretty solid house, ex except for the, what I could tell around the back. Um, Looks like maybe a tree had fallen or a limb had fallen at one point on the on the eaves and left them kind of in a, in a bad situation. But um, any, any comments on that? I, that's that was my uh, thought. I couldn't figure out what did it, uh, but it was kind of strange that it was just on that one side. Yeah, yeah, it looked like a probably a tree or a limb had fallen <clears> or something. <throat> poorly repaired or not not even really addressed. I couldn't tell if anyone was living there or not, but uh, certainly didn't see anything else. Well, you, you know, uh, with that carnage being, it looks like being broken off all the way back to the wall. You know, water's probably getting in and running down. Uh, that would create some problems for someone uh, in the near future, but uh, it could be it could be fixed without a whole lot of trouble if someone I, I don't know if anyone lives there but I, I was actually I went to look at this one today and there's a lady out front like trimming hedges and and doing some yard work at that house today I've been by there a couple or two or three times and there's always not always but majority of the time there's one car parked back there near that house as if uh, they park and walk up to the parking that little cul-de-sac for lack of a better term it's just a dead end uh and and they just parked the car there and apparently walk up to the to the home so i don't know but it's a uh you could send them a, a notice for maintenance uh see what happens i could i could certainly send them a um property maintenance violation notice. Yeah. Let's see if that gets them off the center. Okay. If uh, if the board doesn't really want to make a motion at this time on that one, I can I can do that. Does anyone have a, a motion or would you just rather me do that? Maybe we could do that this time, and, and if it isn't fixed or hadn't been addressed, maybe ask them to contact you, uh, then bring it up at the next meeting, you know, and, and carry it further. Just informally, is that okay with the board? 
Well, I think we can we can either do that or just make a motion to send them a property yeah, maintenance if notice. If we're gonna do that, we might as well just vote to carry it over. Um, does anyone have a motion to carry it over to the next meeting? Or was that your motion, James? And and you're gonna take care of the, the letter to them to see if they'll do it with just an informal letter? Yes, let's carry it over then. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, Mr. Love. Um, all right, a motion and a second. Stephanie, would you please take a roll call? All right, Mr. Riddle? Yes. Mr. Love? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Isbell? Yes. Okay, so that passes unanimously. Um, I'll, I'll, to carry it over, uh, I'm going to send a maintenance, um, property maintenance violation letter. Um, moving on, 809 Columbiana Road. Um, hopefully you've all seen this one. It's uh, a gigantic tree fell on it and crushed it essentially in half. Um, it hey, like Wyatt. Got... Yes. Just wanted to let you know now you have uh, you have a, a, a lot of people who are in the who are in the chat that want to speak to this. So I don't know how you want to handle that. Th uh, thank you, uh, Brian. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give them an opportunity to speak. Um, uh, Zach, you had a comment? Go ahead. Yeah, I actually went out to the house on Labor Day uh, about a week after that tree fell in the house and found out it was sitting on a live wire at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it had been like that for over a week. So I actually had the power company come out uh, within an hour to cut the line to the building. Uh, the inside's in terrible condition. It has fractures in the roof all the way down to the middle of the house. You can tell where animals have been in there, paw prints everywhere, there's mold on the walls. Uh, it looks like they have removed the tree. Uh, it just has a tarp hanging over. Looks like it's caved in over the part where it fell in. It's in real bad shape. No doubt that tree was big enough to crush the foundation. Um, okay, so um, are there any board members who wanted to go ahead and say something before we uh, let members of the public go ahead and chime in? Well, I have uh, one thing I'll add, Mr. Mr. Uh, Pugh, is uh, this particular address has been on our uh, abatement board docket many times. Uh, and they would do just enough to get it uh, taken care of. And this time, it looks like Mother Nature took care of it. And uh, I mean, if the house is salvageable, uh, you know, we would need some structural uh, from an engineer, you know, something to show us that. But uh, outside of that, you know, I didn't see any uh, thing to do with it except condemnation. Well, I think I think we all know it would cost much more to salvage it than to build a new yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, um, let's go ahead and hear from uh, some members of the uh, some residents of the area. Uh, Brian, do you do you have them queued up, or how do you want to do this? Well, that's what I was. That, that's what I was asking. So you've got, um, unfortunately, a couple of people who have joined that didn't. They, there's no name associated with them, so it's going to be hard to call on them. Um, may I suggest that they raise their hand? Can you see everybody's profile? Can you see everybody's name? Um, I yeah. When I pull up the chat, I can see a couple of names. Okay, yeah. If you've got the chat, you you can do it. Then go go through it. That that that'd be the other way. Just go through the the chat and pick them, They're especially toward the end. Yeah. Let's see. It looks like uh, I think if I if I start at the oldest one, we've got Virginia McKibbins. Um, are you on here? Hey, I'm here. I I was gonna let Julia go first. She's right next door, so she probably has the largest stake. I think. I'm happy to go after her, um, but I think we should let her go first. That's great. Hi, Julia, how are you? I'm doing well, although I wanted other people to go uh, first 
actually because I have so much to say. I don't want to dominate. And I want other people to step forward. I know from talking to people up and down the street that it, I'm not the only one. And I was relieved. I had no idea there was so much interest. But I, I will say the core issues to me are, and, and by the way, <clears throat> I, have, I consider myself to be an extremely good neighbor. I have contacted them when things fell, when, when something was, in other words, I have uh, gone out of my way to create a relationship with them and hope that they uh, they come through. They also continued to tell me that they would have an occupant. They told me they would be selling it. They told me, they told me many, many things. In the meantime, that's what I'm saying. The truth is right, right before the tree happened, which like you said, uh, I, I think sealed the deal as, as far as I'm concerned because of the reaction and that is there has been, obviously there's a cosmetic, there's the aesthetics that it's an eyesore to the neighborhood, an incredible one. And it's been there. I bought my house 50, over 15 years ago. And I was told by several people on the street that it had already been empty years before I bought this house. Um, again and again, I see just a little something done and apparently enough to keep the, the city off of them. Uh, and enough told to me so that I stay off of them. But I think, I think it's, I think it's, uh, just, well, for the, for the, I actually, it affects our property values, specifically the threats, as I have told uh, a, a few people. There, now Zach mentioned the animals, but there have been vagrants living in there. I've been broken into again and again because they have easy entrance, easy entrance and exit and they're close to 65 it is a direct threat to me and all the people here um we're talking about i mean and the fence was broken i mentioned that nothing was done they got their uh, air conditioner and heater stolen all the copper taken from it they found graffiti on the inside we're not talking about a small thing we're talking about something big this feels threatening to me and apparently to many people around me, not just it's irritating and it, it doesn't look good. It feels like we could be hurt. In addition, and Mr. Pugh, you would have gotten a letter about this. We had the arborist come out. The fact that it is vacant, the fact that there's no one there watching what happens, no one can live there. Your arborist determined that the tree that's in the front is older and not as in good condition as the one that damaged the house corner to corner. That one can fall on me. And your arborist, a PhD tree guy, uh, said that it's, yeah, it's a threat to fall on me. So we're talking multiple threats, not, not only to my property value over 20 years. And I, like I said, I've been good and I've, we talk about ample, ample opportunity. When I bought this house, there were new windows. Apparently that was just one of a series of, of things. Okay, we said the vagrants, the tree. Um, and by the way, they say it could be airborne. When the, when the power, when the tree was, the one that did fall was left on the power line for a week, had someone been there, they would have noticed that it's being empty is a threat. No one is there to take care of it. And be cut now. If it were, if they maintained it, it wouldn't be as much of a threat. But not only that, it's very clear it calls people to this area, because uh, again, imagine how easy it is to walk through the townhomes behind it, because there are many people who walk through um, that area to come into any of our backyards. Um, that's that's not okay, especially being on the edge of the neighborhood and being it's very quick to get out of an area. Um, so let's see, I have, I have uh, more, there's spray mold throughout. I have, and there are many, many people interested in taking this property and doing something with it. I think it's very clear that the owners there are not going to. You've given them ample opportunity. I would like, I have more to say, but I would like the other, the other people along the street who have, I, I think it's pretty clear. I believe the, the issues are, are numerous. They're a direct threat to many of us. 
I mean, not just the pocketbook, to us bodily. Okay. I think okay. I've had a question for you. Yes. Uh, did the arborist have a, give you an indication how old that tree was? That thing is absolutely huge. He said that there he could possibly be as much as 150 years old. That's it's what I huge. that's what I guessed. It is. I, I love big trees. I I protect them when I can. But that one that has worried me for a while, and the one that fell on the yeah. house, you could see he examined the roots. Um, I walked around, I just listened to him and, and watched him. Not only that, it's a threat to split. It is yeah, showing signs exactly. of splitting. Exactly. Uh, and keep in mind- It is outside of his life expectancy. It's, it is beyond his life expense, right. expectancy, it's disease. I would say, right. Not only that, okay. keep in mind, it is over the road. It right. is over the area right by the sidewalks. Gotcha. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Julia. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so next, um, I believe is, um, oh, who did I say, uh, Elizabeth, or was that Virginia? It was Virginia, Virginia McGibbons. Yes, go ahead, Virginia. Thank you. So we live up the street. We bought our house in 2010. At that time, um, when we were kind of settling on everything, we called about the condition of the house. They did a few things, patchwork job. It's been like that throughout the years. Um, beginning of COVID, part of the front porch um, stoop fell off and they had somebody out here to kind of like prop that back up. You know, it wasn't a real true fix. Those posts are not reliable. Then the day the tree fell, um, it just really sealed the deal. They, I don't, you know, I didn't actually have a way to get in contact with them. I called you guys and got on the list, um, but, it has had animals living in it for some time now, and now it is just open. They did at one point put a tarp on it. The tarp has fallen in. Um, if anybody there has an email, I can send pictures of the house as of tonight. I had my husband walk down there and take some fresh pics after we heard about the needing updated pictures and evidence. Um, so we can send that to you, but it is... Um, very unsafe and I can let some of the other neighbors speak to that but it is open animals people anybody can go in there and be injured okay thank you thank you very much for those comments um I believe next up was um Elizabeth Milne is that correct Elizabeth are you here Okay, I think Elizabeth may have gone. Um, the next one uh, was, um, let's see, that was Virginia, Elizabeth. Um, there's a W Sparks, Will Sparks. Are you on here? Yeah, that, that's me. I'll just echo what Virginia and Julia said. It's an eyesore. It's... Um, <laughs> Um, we live just a few doors up, my wife and I, she's also on, um, and yeah, we just, or, or we want something to be done, um, to make just, whether it's nicer or whether it's condemned, I don't care, but something needs to happen, so. Understandable. <clears throat> um, all right, so is there anyone else on here that I'm missing? Yeah, um, I'm, I was going to say something quick too. We live uh, two houses up at 813 Columbiana Road and uh, we're, we're new. Um, we just bought um, in March. And just to reiterate what Julia was saying, it really is concerning to hear that no one's keeping up with the property when the tree falls and there's a live wire there. I mean, that's a danger to not only Julia's house, but our house two doors up. And I think there's real opportunity for, you know, them, if they're not willing to keep up with it, to condemn it and, you know, force the sale or something, because I think that property does have value. It's, it's really a shame that it's been, you know, such an eyesore for so long. It would just make so much sense to kind of force an action to where we could tear it down or force them to, you know, revamp it, because I feel like this area of Homewood's really starting to grow. And this is, that's definitely the biggest eyesore in this area. Fair enough, thank you very much. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak to this? Hey, uh, this is Michael. Go ahead, I'm, Michael. I'm Will's neighbor. 
And I live down the street as well. And I would just like to add, I mean, I completely echo what Woods just said and what Virginia said and Will. And it, I mean, to me, it's just such a waste. Nobody's using it. We've all heard the, the reasoning. Uh, that huge tree in the front has invasive privet and whatnot, and it looks diseased around it. And, uh, you know, I, I share all the concerns and, you know, I echo everything. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, anyone else? All right. Um, <clears throat> I, think we've, I think we've heard from everyone. Um, does the board have a, uh, a motion? I make a motion to uh, send it as an unsafe structure for condemnation. And also the tree in the front, if you have, uh, is, it, is the arborist that's on board to check the tree out and maybe uh, condemn it as well if necessary? Because it is huge. We can't, we can't condemn the tree at this board. I've, I've been down that road. Okay, um, all right. Okay, sorry. Discussed can we make it. them aware of it? We can. We can certainly get um, get Scott involved in that, yeah. and perhaps okay. he, can, he can get okay. something before City Council. Okay. Uh, um, okay, so we, 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 sure, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Someone else. Julia, you wanted to speak? Uh, well, uh, yes, I was just wondering. I was wondering. Oh, I heard an, an echo. Um, is, is there, I mean, are, are there concerns? I mean, what's the process for it if something happens to someone who walks? Because that tree is right up next to the sidewalk and I'm a little bit concerned about that. Um, the arborist would tell you, uh, he can see that big limbs would fall uh, very easily and that's the people run into that. That, I mean, obviously it's falling over would affect me the most, but I'm talking about the, any other people. What 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 issue? What is liability? Does the city have for that? Well, he's, that's, that affects a public a public property. Which Mr. Pew City would see uh, if Mr. Scott yeah. Cook would check it out. He is the uh, uh, yeah. enforcement agent, uh, enforcement officer for uh, overgrowth and and trees. I would assume that are uh, having issues as well. Yeah, if the tree if the tree was on uh, city right of way, um, we could schedule it for removal tomorrow. Uh, going on to private property to do things requires requires lots of legal uh, yeah. legal you know things that have to be ticked off. Um, we it's possible that we can get something done through city council though, but it, it, it's not this board can't do it. Um, it, this board can only address unsafe structures. So we do, have a, we do have a motion from Mr. Riddle and a second from Mr. Isbell uh, to go ahead and issue a notice of unsafe structure. Uh, Stephanie, would you take a roll call vote, please? Mr. Riddle? Yes. Mr. Love? Oh, Jeremy. Jeremy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Harris? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Isbell? Yes. Okay, that passes unanimously. Uh, this will move. Um, I will go ahead and issue an unsafe structure notice. They will be given 60 days to abate the nuisance. If they do not, it will be uh, sent before city council for an official resolution of unsafe structure also known as condemnation. Thanks everyone for joining on that one. Um, moving on, the next one we have on the list is 307 West Glenwood Drive. I don't know who all has been out to this one, but I went back out there this morning and confirmed that the back door is still wide open and I saw a cat again. There's a cat. <laughs> At least one cat living in there, maybe a whole bunch of them. Uh, I assume they're feral. 
So we've got a real, from the front, it doesn't look so bad. Um, yeah. Neighbors are keeping up the yard as, as we learned last last month. But uh, yeah, I, 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 when I went up there to take the picture, you could see a cat run from, from one room to the other. Uh, so anyway, we just wanted to point that out. It's, it's, still, it's still sitting open. Anyone else have any comments? Uh, I would just say Jeremy and I went out uh, day before yesterday, I guess it was, and uh, we found the same thing. The back doors open. Didn't see any cats, but yeah. we walked throughout the house, and uh, it just looks like someone just left and maybe closed the door and didn't lock it and just left everything as is, but it's been ramshacked by kids, I guess, and uh, we also went through the basement, and the basement doors uh, open, and it is uh, damaged, half the door's gone, so there's the only way to close it up would be to board it up, uh, and then there's roofs leaking in a couple of the rooms, uh, feces all over the house, you know, it's just terrible. It's sad, it, I mean, when you go in there and you see it, it just looks like something you see on TV where, uh, you know, somebody just closed the door and never went back. Yeah, exactly. Uh, any other comments? Are you looking for public comment? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, feel free. Uh, Brian Jarman, 305 West Glenwood Drive. I live next door to the property. And we go with this phrase. We've been living here about six years. We dealt with it off and on for a while. I kind of let Miss Peters left her alone after the city cut the tree down in the front yard. If any of y'all remember a few years ago, a very large oak tree in the front yard dropped a very large limb across West Glenwood and that spurred city council and city to cut it down. So I haven't really had any issues with her really since. And uh, as you alluded, Mr. Hightower across the street cuts the yard because he doesn't like to look at it. I mean, our, our biggest, you know, concern issue is that it's just, it, one, you're right, it's, it's, it's open. And I don't think the kid breaking in situation really happens anymore just because it's so run down with feral cats and whatnot in there. Um, but I don't know. We just we just wish you would keep the property up. And I know there's no way the city can do that, but it is a bit of a hazard right now. And to be honest, we've gotten used to being used to the privacy of that side, which is great. <laughs> but, but I mean the the I mean when the city cut the rear yard down. I mean, they clear cut the whole thing. I mean, that's, you know, mice and rats start showing up. The cat has presents every other day kind of thing. So it's, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the good answer is. I mean, there's, there's no good answer. It's just a, it's a shame, but we just want to put our two cents in that it's, it is everything in the picture you say that it is. And that's anything else. No, that's it. That's that's about all I got. If you have any questions about the validity of that picture, I'm glad. Okay, thank you very much, Brian. Um, are, are there any other uh, public comments? Looks like Gabe's trying to talk. Mr. P. No, I wasn't. I, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I thought you were trying. Yeah, sorry. Talk. No, that's okay. Sorry about that, James. That's okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, as in, send this thing as an unsafe structure. It needs some help, that's for sure. I second. Okay. Uh, motion from Mr. Riddle and a second from, uh, was that Mr. Harris? Gabe, Gabe, was that you? Yes, it was, Why? Okay, all right, uh, so Stephanie, would you go ahead and take a walk on? 
Mr. Riddle? Yes. Mr. Love? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. And Mr. Isbell? Yes. Okay, so that passes unanimously. Uh, per, per the Code of Alabama, I will send them an unsafe structure. They'll be given 60 days uh, in which to abate the nuisance and bring it into um, bring it into compliance with a, a safe structure. And uh, if they do not do that, it will go to city council for um, possible condemnation. Any questions about anything tonight? Why I'm well, Brian Jarman again. Hey, Brian. Hey, uh, about the 307 property, you mentioned notifying her, uh, Ms. Peters. The city yes. does address in Forest Park in Birmingham on file, right? We're not going to send stuff to 307. I'm sorry, I'm sorry we, have, we, we have the owner's actual home address now on file. Oh, great, great. I will get that from you. Yeah, maybe you could just shoot me an email with that. I'll, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think we've had it from prior meetings, but I'll look back and see. But I just want to make sure we're not sending notices to 307 West when she obviously does not reside there or check mail. Okay, well, I'll, I'll look and see what we have on file too. That, that's, that's good, I appreciate that. Okay, no problem, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments about anything tonight? Yeah, I got a question. Uh, is this, is this uh, board meeting being recorded for later replay or viewing? Yes, it was recorded. Uh, it will take, this is a long one. It's going to take a little while for it to completely uh, convert. And then I will upload it, which will also take some time just because it's going to be such a big file, but it'll be there later this evening. It'll be uh, both on the city's YouTube and Facebook page available. Uh, and then it'll be out on Twitter. I can send links, but uh, it'll, it, it will be there later this evening. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. All right, um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I second that motion. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Good night, everyone. Thank you.